Powerful waves, dramatic sky, and a moody edit. That's what I'm going to do today on Behind the Raw, Access Denied. Let's go. Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, and welcome back to another episode of my series, Behind the Raw. And thank you very much to everybody who has given me feedback on my previous episodes. I'm really happy now that you're enjoying my view and my insights into how I would edit an image. Today, I'm gonna to take you through an image that I captured on the coast of Cork. Now, there's a bit of a backstory in relation to this image, and I won't bore you with the details in this, but I'd love if you could check out the video, which I'll link up here, because the location that I went to is absolutely Absolutely stunning but I couldn't get to the area that I normally would go to but instead I was forced to go to a completely different area and with that in mind the images that I got were actually better than what I had expected because I had some incredible wave action just off the coast and by being forced down to a different area I managed to find some new compositions that I'd never done before the day was a very moody and energetic and dramatic day so what did I do I'm going to edit the image with that in mind so as always I'm going to take you over to the computer and I'm going to talk you through my thoughts what I like what I don't like the editing that I did to the image and my workflow so hopefully you can learn a couple of things too that might help you on your own editing journey so let's go okay so over onto the computer here now and the image that I've chosen is one of the many frames that I took on this shoot now that's the thing with seascape photography you are going to take quite a lot of shots and then because every wave is going to be different but this particular one that I really liked was because I was getting all of this movement here from the waves that are breaking on the rocks in front of me I had this wave as it's coming in here and moments later this would have been right over my feet but because I took the shot at this point in time I was to keep some of the detail that are here below me these incredible rocks that are there with the moss you've got the detail as well here on the cliffs and then with the sky now this, I took the shot here at one second f8 ISO 100 and I was at 26 mil and I had the camera quite low and I took a number of different shots here as the waves would have come through now looking at the base data if I look at the histogram over here you can see that it's quite dark because you've got all these dark areas here but most importantly is the sky and the sky is the brightest part of the image here but it's not blown and that's going to be important so that I can actually get detail out of that later if I'd gone for any longer than one second I would have risked blowing out that sky and if you blow out that sky then you will not get any that detail back but thankfully I have all that detail within there so the first thing that I want to do is straighten my camera or straighten the horizon now I'm generally quite mindful of doing that in the field and I always want to try and get it as close as possible but even at that being said you will always get movements because if the wave is coming in hitting your tripod it'll move it slightly anyway so it's quite difficult here to be able to find an area to be able to straighten horizon however if I look up here you have an area of if I zoom in which I can see which is the waves in the background so that's a bit of horizon which is natural horizon it's going to help me to straighten this image even though it's only a small amount visible you can use it to your advantage now looking at that here I see this is slightly off so if I go into my uh, crop tool and I just take it here and I'm going to straighten that and looking at it here you can see that it's actually moving quite a lot. Now, the best way to do that as well is to take your guides and bring those down and then line that up directly with your horizon so that you know that it's straight. Now I know that's straight, okay, perfect. I can now look at this and I see that the part that I zoomed into is perfectly straight. So that's the first step that I want to do. The second thing I want to do is I want to be able to portray or convey the drama that was within here and the moodiness in relation to the entire scene so with that in mind I'm going to edit this image on the dark side so first thing is I'm going to go here into my basic panel and I'm going to look and say okay do I need to change my white balance now again you can utilize this take your eyedropper tool and drop it on a gray part of the sky and you can see here that, that has not made any difference whatsoever so I know that my white balance on this image is perfectly fine the next thing I want to do is to look at my general edits so on the exposure if I take the brightest part here as you can see like I mentioned earlier on it's the sky but I have got detail within that so it's not lost which is good to know so I can take that and bring that back to normal and then all I need to do is try and even out this histogram a bit further so by using then clicking on the histogram and I, by the way I would have shown this in my most pre recent episode as well of behind the raw you don't need to move the sliders down here you can actually grab your histogram so I want to take the darker area and make that slightly bit brighter so I can just grab this and bring up that detail that's 
here. Now what that's doing is it's moving the shadows here on the bottom. I can do the same thing by just moving the slider, but here it gives me a visual representation of what the actions I'm doing and the effect they have on the overall image. Now bringing up the shadows here as well, and it's up now by 60, you can see the detail here on the uh, cliffside. So again, if I just take that back, you can see with uh, zero, it's quite dark. But if I just take that again and bring this up to uh, 60, all of a sudden you're getting all this detail here within these stunning cliffs and the greenery as well that's on the side of that cliff. So that's the first thing that I want to do here in relation to that. The next thing then is, okay, do I want to ad adjust any of the whites or any of the blacks? Now, looking at here, I have a small bit of room that I can move here in relation to it. I can move my whites this way, but if I notice here, these is telling me that there's a highlight and it's looking at it's going to go, it's going to blow. So if I look at that and say, okay, bring that further, where is it going to go and where is it going to blow at? I can click on this, it's going to show me again, it was the sky. So that's why it's very important that you expose your highlights and you get the detail in that sky, because if you don't, you won't be able to get it back afterwards. It would end up as a white aspect on on the image. So for me here, I'm going to bring this back down my whites and I'm going to bring it that it's not clipping anywhere at all. Okay. Next thing is I want to take my highlights. I can bring those up again slightly and then I want to take my blacks. Now if I bring my blacks down, you can see here it creates more of a moody aspect to the image. You can bring your blacks up typically here, but by doing that it makes the whole thing brighter. What I want is, this is great because you've got a natural framing that's happening here with the cove. So I want to keep that within the image. So my blacks for me, I'm going to probably leave them, yeah, I'd probably leave them at zero for all intents and purposes. I had it at minus one, but zero is perfectly fine. Now, texture, I don't want to do anything with that to the overall image, but I do want to do something with the water and texture, and I'll get to that in the second part of my edit. Clarity, I won't use, but dehaze. And again, same trick that I'd always use here, is if I look at the sky, it looks like there's nothing. It's gonna be of any dust spots or water spots, or on this occasion, mist spots. And I'll show you what I mean by that. You take your dehaze and whack that up fully here. Now, if we look, You've got all of these artifacts up here. And these artifacts, what they effectively were, were bits of the sea foam that was down here, was being caught by the wind and then being pushed up in front of the camera. There's quite a lot of work involved in relation to removing those. I do have one uh, dust spot here or rain spot, but what I'm going to do on this is I'm going to take my heel tool and it's going to be a long process. But what you want to do is make sure that you're adjusting the size of the brush here to be not too big, but not too small. So just in relation to the right size so that it covers, click on this, that's going to remove that. And I'm going to just go through each of these here and and I'll fast forward on the video so you can see what it's actually done when it's done here, but it's very simple. But as you can see, there's quite a lot here that I didn't spot until I dropped in my dehaze tool. So that's the power of the dehaze tool. But yeah, I'll continue on these and I'll check back once it's done. Okay, so that's all those cleaned up here. Now, as you can see, this entire area is pretty much clean of that sea foam. And now when I take my dehaze tool and I bring that back down, again, they're not going to be visible because they weren't visible unless I went into the dehaze, but there's nothing worse than having that. If you ever wanted to print the image later and you found that you had all of these dust spots. Another advice as well on that is make the brush as small as possible and do them incrementally. So each of the dots don't do one big area because it will take a sample from another area and then you'll end up with a big blotch, let's just say in the center. So that's now cleaned of any of the dust spots. But what I want to do is I want to have a bit of the dehaze within the image here. So I'm going to add, for now, a 34 on the dehaze. And then the next thing I'm going to do is look at my crop. Now, what do I like within this image? Now, I love this shape here. I love the way this imposing wave is coming in. I like these here, which is the breaking wave. Of course, I like the cliff, but up here and this part of the sky, it doesn't necessarily add much to the image to me. So I'm gonna just do a quick test here. I'm gonna to go to a 16.9. And if I'm doing that, you gotta make sure there's a couple of things that you're bearing in mind. Number one is, the end point up here of the cliff. So if I was to bring that down here for argument's sake to get more of this detail, I'm going to lose that cliff. So by having that as your natural cutoff, you can see it here in the top right hand corner where it fades off. Now I'm losing a small bit in relation to down here. Maybe I'm losing a bit too much because I do like that, but because I was so close to this, 
it's not actually sharp. So I'm going to just take this from here. And now what I have is an image which is naturally framed and I've got the uh, detail in the water. I've got the detail as well below me here on these rocks. And if I look at this area here, you can see this water coming in and then I've got this nice green that's within the overall rocks. What I love here is just the movement of the water. And that's what I want to tackle next because you can see all these micro movements here within the water. So I want to try and bring out some of the detail in relation to that. So to do that, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to do a, um, a radial gradient and I'm going to take an area here I'm just going to make it big enough that it covers this part of the water. It's actually handy here if you look at this curve, it kind of sits well within that curve. But I want to just slightly make this a bit longer and then I'm going to turn it so I can still keep that but I'm getting more of the water. And now what I can do on that is I can affect everything within this. Now what I want to do on that is I want to be able to add some texture. So going down here I can add texture purely within this. If I go all the way here you see that there's no texture, it's kind of soft. And now going all the way here, you can add in more texture in relation to that water. Now I normally wouldn't go all the way. I'll go probably around with 52. I'll add in a bit of clarity as well, which is going to sharpen that up and create crunch those blacks let's just say uh, and then finally within that is I want to affect the shadows and the highlights so the highlights when here if I make that brighter this I'm losing the details so I don't want to do that so I'm going to keep that detail here what I do want to do is bring up the shadows slightly and then I'm going to bring down the blacks and what you end up now with here when we look at this image if I zoom in here, you've all of this texture now that's visible within the overall water and I'm not affecting any other part of the image. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to bring out some of the detail on that sky. So we'll try here and see if it'll work. I'm going to go add new mask and I'm going to select the sky. The thing I found with the sky selection in the, in the past is that it gets a bleed over so we can see here what it's connecting. So to test that, I'm going to grab my exposure, I'm going to bring that all the way down and you can see what it's affecting and you can see that it hasn't taken any of the cliff but what it does do here is it gives me the opportunity to be able to edit that sky. Now if I bring it really really down here it makes it really dark and imposing or I can just say okay I want to affect the blacks, similar aspect in relation to that, I can bring the blacks all the way down, I can bring the shadows all the way down and then I only need a small bit of underexposure in relation to that. But by doing that I'm affecting this far too much and I'm leaving this big white area in the sky which I didn't have as a white area in the first instance anyway. So I'm going to bring those back here and what I am going to do from that is I'm going to come down and I'm just going to use my dehaze and dehaze is going to add up and darken up that part just enough in relation to here and now I'm left with this white area in relation to that so if I come back and go here and try and affect my highlights I can bring down the details and now I'm getting this part here which is perfectly exposed within the image. If I look at that as a screen without all of the clutter and press L that removes as a light box and if I press L again it creates everything and I can now look at the overall image and this shot to me encapsulates exactly what I was feeling uh, on that day. It is powerful, it is dark, it is moody. I can actually now start looking and saying okay do I want to increase the vibrance within the image here to really make it pop because when I start to look at the areas that I've edited I haven't even touched the colors so the colors that are here are the colors that were there um, in the raw file but I can take that if I whack my vibrance all the way up just to give you an idea you know that's too much but what it does do is you can see the greens that are starting to come out here you can see the aqua color in the water as well so I'm going to give this a bit of vibrance probably maybe around about 32 I think it looks fine to me uh, and then if I just take my saturation again the opposite I can bring it down it goes mono if I bring it back up here I add a small bit more saturation of that color that's already there within the sky. So that from an image point of view I think uh, works for me. I really like the movement that I have in the water here. I definitely like the waves that are crashing as well and this was hundreds of frames that I would have taken to get me to this shot. So I hope you enjoyed um, this look behind the raw on my series behind the raw and for this incredible adventure. Uh, if you haven't seen the episode actually where I captured this image I'd like for you to go watch it. It's actually linked up here and Hopefully I will see you next Sunday when I come to another adventure and another adventure which is totally different to normal. This storm and this sea foam, the sea foam became the star of the show for my shots when I went to another nearby beach to this area here. So hopefully you can join me as well for those. Thank you as always for watching. If you're first time on the channel, please hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment and until the next time, schlange voll.